Good morning, part two to uh, repotting my Monstera. This works for any repotting Monstera um, videos. Uh, yesterday I treated my large-ish Monstera for mealybugs and uh, let it dry overnight. I am here now, had a couple of cups of coffee, and I am ready to repot the plant. Um, if you get and are lucky enough to get um, a cutting uh, that has roots on it, this also uh, would be how you would pot them up. They're um, aeroids, and they like to have it a little bit drier than normal, so you want to make sure that your soil is compatible to what their needs are and what you're watering habits are and what your environment is. Um, I use an epiphytic mix that I make myself, which is equal parts of cactus soil, perlite, and orchid bark. I use that for my aeroids. I use it for my Hoya. I use it for any epiphyte. Um, and I use it for my cactus, actually. A lot of them use the same soil. If I have things um, that require more moisture, I'll add a little peat moss or sphagnum moss to it, but um, I'm a heavy waterer, if you didn't know. Um, but I do uh, like to keep them where they drain, and they drain really well, and I don't mind doing the extra watering because that's just how my plants thrive um, in my environment. It might be different for you. But anyway, let's get started. Okay, this is going to be a lot of fun because this is a big plant. This is the biggest pot I have. I wish I had a bigger pot, but I'm going to go ahead and use this knowing that I'm probably going to have to repot her in about a year. So let's get started. I have have filled my pot up with my uh, potting mix. Again, it's an epiphytic mix, but I use it also for my aeroids. It stays light. It stays airy. It stays a little bit chunky because of my growing conditions and also my watering habits. I like for them to drain really quickly. Um, which also means I have to water a little bit more, but I'm okay with that. That's what I do. So anyway, I'm going to start with probably I've got two huge pieces. Um, one is really big. <laughs> and then one is a little bit smaller. So I'm going to start with the big plant. As you can see, I've got lots of good roots on it. I pulled it out of its pot because I treated it for mealybugs and I wanted the plant to be able to kind of dry overnight after all of that. Um, and this lady's trying to grab everything. Um, so I'm going to plant her probably, we'll see how she fits in the pot, but you don't want to plant her up so uh, deep because they do like to have some of their uh, roots just right below the soil like that so we'll do that now i'm going to have to put some poles to support her growth and i don't know depending on how it looks um i may go ahead and cut some of these and propagate them we'll see how it goes so let's get started um she's uh oh this leaf is broken so i'm gonna go ahead and and again, I didn't do this on film, but I have um, sterilized my scissors, but I broke this leaf. So let's go ahead and chop that off. Um, just making sure I don't have mealy bugs left over. And it looks like I found one or two more. So I'm going to go ahead and make sure that they're mealy bug free. All right, um, I am going to uh, kind of dig a little hole around. I've also got a pot with soil over here because I knew I was going to need to either add some or subtract some. So let me go ahead and do that. Um, kind of get the roots down in there. I kind of shake them a little like that. Let me see. I'm going to pull this around so y'all can see. So you'll notice there's lots of uh, gaps, right, uh, down here. I'm going to backfill with some soil, but first I'm going to kind of cover the roots that are down there, and then I'm going to put the soil in here. And I'm going to make a mess. That's just kind of part of it. I have tile floors, so it's not a big deal. I'll be able to sweep all this up and clean it 
but the reason I'm not doing it outside is because it's already hot. Um, it's July in Central Texas, so, you know, it's already 90 degrees outside. It's going to be 108 today. And I am going to leave this plant inside. I'm going to put her outside eventually because if you remember in my first video, I talked about how I want the lace wings to kind of take over the um any remaining mealybug issues because they do really well outside with that and i will do that but for like the first couple of days i'm going to keep her inside separated from other plants here in the kitchen i've got a big monstera behind me i've got big plants but i do have areas in my kitchen that receive decent light it wouldn't be a good long-term solution but it would be a good part you know uh temporary solution to do that with her so i'm going to go ahead and keep her kind of cool and well watered for the first you know week but you'll see how i'm building the soil to support these roots right here and i've taken this aerial root and i've placed it in the soil i don't know it, what that does if anything but you know, I've heard that it encourages them to grow more because their aerial roots are now grabbing onto something. I have seen that personally to be true. Um, I just don't know if it's scientifically true. I don't know if it's just because we see it that way, and so therefore it is. But um, it does seem to do that for me. I'm going to take a bamboo pole, mainly because I need to support her while I continue to pot her up. And I'm going to run it, let's see, how do I want to do that? I'm going to go ahead and put the first one right down the middle. And these may not be where they stay uh, for life, right? I'm just trying to get it to where, oh, there goes my scissors. I'm just trying to get it to where I can help support this plant until she is really rooted in grabbing that soil so that she doesn't topple over. So I think we'll start there. Sorry, I had to adjust it so that y'all could kind of see what she's looking like. Um, I had my mic is not working, so uh, I'm just sorry for the audio. But anyway, um, I've got it all kind of where I want it underneath here, kind of packing her in a little bit. But she's going to be really wobbly until uh, she takes root. So um, here is the other one. And I could do a couple of things with this one if I wanted to. And in fact, now that I'm thinking about it, I think I will, mainly because she's really thin here. I think what I'm gonna do with this plant is I'm gonna water propagate it. I have a vase that and a place, a vase and a place uh, to put this plant in and water propagate it. And then I'll start a whole nother plant. So. I'm actually going to not plant this one up with her. I think she, this is enough, especially considering the pot's size. Um, and it's, it may look funky. So we're going to follow up with her. I'll show you how I do that uh, in the next video. Now that I have her potted up the way that I want her, uh, I'm going to take uh, some Velcro. This is plant Velcro. I'm going to take some Velcro and secure her to these poles right where she would kind of naturally tend to grab anyway. So, and the plant's gonna look funky. When you repot a Monstera, she's not gonna lay right. She's not gonna look right um, until she kind of finds her way into the pot and with the light. So every time I repot a Monstera, I'm like, Ugh, it just looks so ugly. <laughs> but the truth is, is that they will settle in and they will start to look the way that you want them to again. They're very jungly plants. I know you can't see what I'm doing, but I'm securing um, this top leaf to the pole up here too. I'll show y'all afterwards what it kind of looks like. So let me grab this. All right, so I just wanted to show y'all what I did, but I wrapped some Velcro there, some Velcro there, and some Velcro there. So it's attached to the moss pole. 
and that's what she looks like. That leaf is kind of wonky. <laughs> um, this leaf is really taking kind of a beating. This was the new leaf. Um, so I'm hoping there's, there's a little bit of a fold here, but it's not quite a tear. So I'm hoping she's gonna be happy again. But this is basically what she looks like after her repot. So um, I'm just gonna put her right here where she, you know, not near the pothos, but kind of in this area, probably in this corner, um, until she starts to get some recovery. And then after that, I will put her outside. She is free of systemic uh, pesticides because I haven't used it in a while. And we'll go from there. I'm not actually going to fertilize her with anything because this soil is brand new and has fertilizer in it. All right, thank y'all. I'll do a follow-up. Okay, let's get started. So this is the smallest section of that monstera that I repotted and we're gonna water propagate it. So the first thing that you always wanna do is sterilize your clippers just with 70% uh, alcohol and I'm gonna go for it. So the good places to cut them, you always wanna make sure there's a node at every cut you make. If the leaf doesn't have a node, then they won't grow. Oh, well, they won't grow roots. They, you can keep them um, as cut flowers and put them in vases if you um, miss the node and they will last about a week, but we want these to grow. Um, this leaf right here that I broke <laughs> while cleaning the plant it's still a pretty leaf. And so what I'm going to do is just cut the broken part. Oh, let me get it right. Bro break up the uh, broken part. And so it's a fresh cut. And I'm going to put it in a vase of water in my bedroom just because it's kind of pretty to look at. And I'll have a week um, or so before uh, I see some decline. I'm going to go ahead and just pop her in water, though, um, so that she starts taking some water in. Um, all right, so this one, this is a relatively new leaf. It may or may not make it, but it's been out a while, so I'm gonna give it a shot. I'm going to cut it right here, oops, right here, so that I grab this node. So I'm gonna cut it right there. And then you'll see I've got a node. This is the node right here, and this is where the growth will come out. I'm just gonna plop her in water. And then all this mess down here, I'm not even gonna deal with. So I'm just gonna cut that off just to kind of get out of the way and I can look at it. Um, and now that I've done that, I'm also looking to make sure there's no mealy bugs. Um, after I've done that, just doing that, I see that there's some nodes here, here, and here that are actually supporting both of these leaves. So I'm just gonna leave it like that. I'm just gonna leave it like that and I'm gonna plop them in water. So you can kind of see, I just put them in water and I'm going to put them near a sunny windowsill. I'm, I'll put them near a su sunny windowsill and that way uh, they get some light. And soon, these screwed up very, very quickly in water. I should have roots on these guys and be able to trans, uh, transplant them into soil. I go directly with soil with the monsters mainly because they're big. Um, and as long as I am mainly bug free and they do well, I think in about a month, I'll be able to put them in soil and I'll videotape that so y'all can see how that goes. All right, thanks for joining me. I wanted to follow up one thing here. I went ahead and made a cut here because that branch was doing some weird stuff and I put it in with the water propagations. I'll show you. All right, real quick. so there are the two big leaves that I just cut off that I showed you, but I have them all in water and they will propagate in about a month and I'll pot them up. Cool, huh? It's kind of a nice little decor uh, to have. Uh, a little bit of uh, rooting propagating monsteras and they will do just fine with that light. This is a western facing window and I have some lights, grow lights on this monstera here that will supplement this at night. All right, follow up for more.